Greetings, brothers. Today we're talking about including an Imperial Knight Super Heavy Detachment in your army. We're going to talk over all the rules, everything you need to know is in this video, so make sure you stick around to the end. Alright, greetings guys. I'm here with Tony and Mark from the Three Grots podcast. If you didn't catch last night's episode, there will be a link in the video description below where we dived into the entire Knights Codex and Mark did some very useful slides, which was really enjoyable. So please check it out down below. Um, today we're going to be talking about including a knight in our Blood Angels list and Mark is going to start by telling us just how we go about doing that detachment wise. Indeed. So we're working off the basis that this is going to be a 2,000 point army, uh, because that's how we basically play most of our games these days. Uh, to include a knight in your list, you're going to be wanting to have a super heavy auxiliary detachment as one of the three detachments you're allowed to have. This will cost you three CP. Deal with it. That's just how it works. Yeah. Um, you choose for the knights to be a free blade, which is like the, the chapter that they are. Um, the, the, uh, it's a, a knight unit that is off wandering, doing its own little thing, not beholden to anyone else. Um, and in doing so, they get the agent of the Imperium keyword, which means you can include them in your list and they don't break uh, faction pure abilities like the Doctrines and the Savage Echoes and all the other bullshit we get. Okay. And, uh, oh, yeah, go. I was going to say, and there's a couple of rules on page 64 about oh, how so we... Many rules. So many rules. <laughs> how, if any detachment includes a free blade, you must uh, instead select a martial trait for each of them, as described on page 76 yep. through 79. So you get to pick what is essentially a knight chapter tactic for your free blade unit. And your free blade unit can be a knight, whether it's a Dominus class or a Questorist class, or a unit of armages, which is a unit of one to three armages. That then, after you've bought that unit, split off and do their own thing once you've deployed them already. But you buy them as one unit, which means that the chapter tactic or, or martial legacy, or whatever the fuck you call it, applies to that whole martial unit. Martial tradition. Martial tradition, sorry. And being a free blade, you get access to all of the Imperialis martial traditions and all of the Mechanicus martial traditions and all the free blade martial traditions except the one that says I'm a carbon copy of a normal knight household, because you're not allowed to choose that one, which is fine. And someone in Discord said to me, have we considered Canis Rex? Would he be an option for free blade as well? I would absolutely never take him. Well, he is a free blade. He, he is inherently a free, free, blade. free blade, yeah. He can do. Um, but I probably wouldn't, because his whole big thing is buffing other knights. Yeah, he's a preceptor. A lot of his rules and benefits and points are tied up in buffing other knights nearby. So why the hell would you take that in a Blood Angels list where there's no other knights for him to buff? So you don't take him. And the same, I think, works for your Forge World knights, but probably don't take them either at the moment because they've not been updated as of making this video. And they don't really work properly at the moment. Yeah, which is a shame, but they'll... Which they'll is a shame because they're beautiful models. Um, okay. And in doing so, you'll you'll keep the ability whereby um, armagers get, uh, are obsec. They they stay that. Um, you keep the ability whereby an armager counts as five models and a bigger knight counts as ten models. Um, you still have to choose an affiliation, whether they're Questor Mechanicus or Questor Imperialis. You won't get the buff for having done so, but it will allow you to access... Imperialis only stratagems and Imperialis only, uh, sorry, Mechanicus only stratagems, which is nice. You will not be able to give your knight a warlord trait or a relic, not even through use of stratagems, because those stratagems require your warlord to be an Imperial knight. And they very clearly state that. So, yeah. sorry guys. So Fair enough. There's not a lot of customization you can do in terms of those. You're including a knight for the sake of what the knight brings rather than all the cheese you can get for upgrading it and stuff. But you can get a little bit of stuff in there. How do you... Is there any, is there any uh, martial traditions that you feel like if you're picking this, which ones do you like? Initially, I was thinking that a ranged support knight would be the thing that I'd want to bring because range support is normally what Blood Angels don't do that well at. 
which makes sense to me. But the fact that you can bring a unit of three Warglaive Armagers, which are all obsec, all move 12 inches, I think that brings some really nice early game heavy quick punch to your list, which will kind of inform the choice of martial tradition that I'd take. And the tastiest martial tradition I'd take for that would be one called Strike and Shield. Yeah. Yes. I, that's the one I like. Page 77. Well. Which is really tasty. So, a melee attacks really? against this model, um, unmodified rolls of 1 to 3 always fail. Each time a melee attack with AP 1 is allocated, uh, this instead has AP 0. Yeah. Mm. So, and so you're leaning on a unit of armagers. Uh, my choice, having reflected on it, would be a unit of three Warglaive Armagers, possibly one or two, depending on how many points I've got. Pick that martial tradition and lean into it and use them as my initial alpha strike while my Blood Angels sort of sit back, wait for Assault Doctrine to come along in turn three when they become that bit more punchy for less investment of CP and resources. Yeah, and... I mean, the Warglaives are nice in that they've got that basically 30-inch uh, strength 9 multi-melter, essentially, yeah. right? It's and... a decent amount of fire support from what is ostensibly a melee knight. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and obviously we talked a bit in last night's video that basically it has the ability to do either the, the 8 attacks yeah. on the 1 damage or less attacks on the, the strike profile, which just gives it versatility, really. And because you can't buff them with any of your Blood Angel buffs or Chapter Command or, or uh, Captain buffs or anything like that, that, on the one hand, you might think it limits them, but it's also really freeing because it means they don't need any support from the rest of your army. They just run off and do their own thing. You just bosh them they straight don't need in. They around anyone else, yeah. They're moving 12, so they're moving as fast as you jump back units. You just run them straight at the enemy and let them... You can hide them it. behind obscuring. It's great. Yeah. Run off, take all the middle objectives, let the opponent try and kill them for a little while. I would far rather have three obsec warglaive armages ready to run forwards and, and jump and claim and stuff than fuck around with five um, infiltrators. I was going to say, and the, the other thing that I don't know if we did mention, but each of your armagers counts as five models as well for obsec. Yeah. Yeah. So it's if you're going to take strangle... Yeah. No, it's really not. If you're going to take stranglehold or something like that, and that's going to be really effective, right? Yep. Um, I forget the wording on Oath of Moment. Does Oath of Moment specifically call for a Marine unit? Or could you could you score Oath of Moment points with... I want to um, say it's going to be Blood Angel only. Uh, well, it's for Marine the, only. Wouldn't but... shock me. Yeah. I don't know, for... actually. Uh, I haven't got the book to hand, annoyingly, for Blood Angels. No, no, it'll be in, it's in the Marine book, Oath of Moment. Oh, fuck, of course it is. Yeah. Yeah. Do, ba, do, ba, do. I mean, for stuff like Relentless Assault, you would be able to get the... Uh, not Relentless Assault. Behind enemy lines, you would be fine. Yeah, this is a core strat. This is a core, core one, isn't it? objective. Oaths of a moment. So Score just... two VP at the end of the battle round if an Adeptus Astartes unit from your army yeah, is holding the six of the center. Okay. So... Maybe don't take oaths if you're taking your armagers for that sort of strategy. Yeah, or use your armagers to tie up all the objectives and throw something yeah. strong into the middle. Uh, yeah. Just worth noting. Uh, I like it. I did like Noble Combatants. I don't know if you're yeah. familiar with that one, but it's like the, the orc on the squig. Um, Noble Combatants is a problem. It is currently broken in that it doesn't work at all. And the reason for that is the way it's written. Uh, it says you can't attack using sweep or strike profiles. And then below that, it says you can't attack using sweep or smash profiles. Oh, and everything has a sweep and strike profile. So yeah. currently, it means you can't attack with anything but your titanic feet. Oh, I'm glad you pointed that out. Okay, so that wouldn't work at all. On no, the, no it more that one is in totally desperate need of an errata slash FAQ. And it'll they, get it, I'm sure. It's just yeah, yeah. they put the wrong word in there, but for mm. the moment, it's unplayable. Frontline fighters is not a bad one. Um, yeah. If you've got a shooty knight, especially, that can be quite unpleasant to run into, especially with things like um, big flamers. A plus one strength really make much of a difference, so depending on what goes on. He's on a flamer, potentially. 
Yeah. Because that would mean that um, if you were feeling particularly, I don't know, whatever it is when you decide you want to bring a Knight Valiant and bring a Knight Valiant and then have a conflagration cannon with strength eight. Yeah. Yeah. So. Wounding Space Marines on twos. So Super that's, that's, that's what I'd bring. Uh, Hem- yeah, shooting heavy weapons in engagement range on super blast. heavy. There's there's one that lets you shoot blast in engagement range as well, isn't there? I was going to say, I, I often don't them. have heavy weapons that can shoot in engagement range, um, but they are minus one to hit, right? Heavy in engagement, uh, yes, yeah. that's right. So you could, if you were going to take a shooting knight, then steel sinewed aim, which gives you plus one to hit when you are shooting in engagement range could help counter that a little yeah. bit. I guess, I mean, there's nothing that stands out to me as super amazing within the martial traditions. On but think... Sands could be quite nice, because it basically gives you all his dust, but on your knights. And yeah, you've got plus a lot one of armor two. just running around that have all got um, plus one armor save to damage one weapons. Yeah. So, so it seems like nothing's amazing, right? But no. there is definitely bonuses here that might be that might have some good synergy. Um Yeah. Um Honored Sacristans is a nice general uh, general benefit for general things. purpose defensive benefit, yeah. Um, but I suppose if you are because because knights typically have their iron shields for five up and vulnerable from range, then strike and shield on your melee armagers I actually think is pretty cool. And with the points increased on redemptor dreadnoughts I actually think the armagers just seem super attractive, right? You know, like they're yeah. 40 points less. You, you can't use them five. Fire support, really, they have got a decent amount of shooting, but they're not a fire support unit. No, no. But they are very good. Yeah, but with a 12 inch move, you're very quickly going to be in range of with that melt they gun. So essentially. The same points, more or less, as a Contender Dreadnought with a multi melter. And they've got an extra shot, arguably. You've got an extra shot, you've got a few extra wounds, uh, they're faster, significantly faster. Same uh, toughness, same uh, save, same weapon skill. Yeah. Um, that I would say they're better in melee. The only thing they haven't got, because you can't use the bondsman abilities, they don't have minus one damage. But other than that, they mm-hmm. are arguably better in every way than a standard contender dreadnought. And to avoid any confusion, by including a knight's detachment in your army, even in this way, you do gain full access to all of the stratagems. You can use them unless there's a restriction in stratagems as you can't for whatever reason. Yeah, Which does mean that you can, if you watch our video yesterday, Mark said about a really stupid way of buffing up a single armager into unkillable doom. Yeah. Um, and you, can, you can't go full fat, but you can certainly go a long way towards that. Yeah, you can give it transhuman versus rolls to hit through the martial tradition we were just talking about. You can give it transhuman versus wound rolls, which is a stratagem. You can give it a five up feel no pain versus another through another stratagem. There's a whole bunch of stuff yeah. you can do. Yeah. Um cool. Okay. So we're including a knight. We're picking our martial tradition. Is there anything else that we need to be aware of before we start deciding what knight we're going to bring into our list? Uh pick whether it is a, a, a aligned to Imperium or Mechanicus. That inherently does not give you a buff, but it does affect what stratagems you'll be able to play on your knight. So you need to Decide look through the stratagems, I guess. Yeah. And one of the th- things I'm going to do is I'm going to go through my codex. I'm going to like mark all the little stratagems for Imperialis, Mechanicus, both, so that at a glance I can see what stratagems I've been yeah, looking at. Yeah, this is one of those places using. where, although I wouldn't normally recommend it, getting the little pack of stratagem cards is not a bad thing. Because then you just take out all the cards that don't affect what you've got. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Which that's makes well. it a little bit easier to keep track of because it is quite complex. I think on balance, probably the Mechanica strats are a little bit better yeah. than it, the Imperial strats. The, ignore the Exalted Court stuff. Ignore the relics. Ignore the Warlord traits. You can't have them. Don't waste your time with them. Uh, don't bother with nightly teachings because they only buff other knights which are irrelevant to what you're going to be doing with it in this case so yeah that's what you need to decide yeah um, but beyond that is what knight do you want to bring yeah so come on john tell us what knights do you want to bring 
Oh, you know that I like to run stupidly expensive 600 point super heavy tanks for my marine army, so the I'd be Castellan's lying. my second choice, yeah. Yeah, if I wasn't thinking about a Castellan. Um, I mean, if you. We, we, we talked a little bit about this, saying that, like, if you put three Redemptors up against a Castellan, uh, if the Castellan goes first, there's a chance he kills two of them and does he, a bunch of damage. He'd almost certainly kill one. He'd fuck up if not kill a second one quite happily. Yep. I reckon. Um, so I think in terms of just raw fire support, I like the Castellan a lot. Obviously, 28 wounds, mm. toughness 8. I'd um, run him with two Siegebreaker cannons. Sorry, two twin Siegebreaker cannons. And two ship and two shield breaker missiles. Personally, yeah, having four yeah. siege breaker missiles is unnecessary. I believe. I think he'll die before he gets them off. Yeah, he might die. You can only fire one off. per turn. By turn four, he's either going to be dead or going to be so degraded. I'd rather have the consistent fire from the shield breaker cannons all the way through. Yeah. yeah, and I actually think at um, 600 and I think it would be 25 points if you include both the shield breaker cannons. Uh, he's pretty tasty and his volcano lance is going to be swingy because it's heavy D3. Yep. But if you roll hot or, you know, maybe there's a unit that you can I, get... All you need to do is you need to have just one hit go through and it's doing significant damage. Yeah, yeah. it's an average of 11 damage isn't it? D6 plus 8. Um so I, I like the volcano lance. I guess you're gonna average two shots per turn. One of them hits. You might that might be a worthwhile CP reroll on the other one, so you get both two hits. Then you wound on twos because it's strength sixteen, and then it's if they don't save, it's just gonna outrightly kill things. Um, it's very very powerful. It's a lot of points, but what, it's what it martial tradition powerful. would you take on the Castellan? Do you think, John? I, I mean, initially I was thinking that you'd want something that um, could do some sort of buff to shooting, but I actually wonder if it's like just keeping them alive because yeah. what is the stratagem that's going to let? What's the stratagem that's going to let him operate on full profile? Is there some, is there one for him? I'm sure there is. I can't remember what it's called off the top of my head. It's a lot the thing paid. is, though, you might want to go um, Mechanicus flavored. Because for four CP, four CP, um, you yeah. then get on an unmodified roll of six to wound, your your gun just does its damage profile in mortal wounds. And he's got a lot of guns. He's got a lot of guns. Now, do you pick one gun for that, or is it all? No, your guns? all of his guns for for that phase. All of his shooting for that phase. Oh, jeez. Okay, <laughs> so that's a lot of rolls to wounds you're going to be doing. <laughs> Um, uh, yeah. And that's uh, stratagem begins with a C, whose name I can't remember off the top of my head. Calculated targeting. Yeah, that's one. Until the end of the phase, each time this model makes a range attack, an unmodified six, the attack inflicts the number of mortal wounds to the target equal to the damage characteristic. Oh, excuse me, characteristic of that attack, and then the sequence ends. So. You're going to get about, on average, 17 shots out of the Night Castellan per turn. Yeah. Um, so you probably get a couple of sixes in there, mm. I would have thought. So you're just fishing for a six on that yeah, big cannon. Don't get me wrong, you're probably going to get much. those sixes on your shield break cannon or something like that. <laughs> whatever the lowest damage is. But it's still, even a couple of mortal wounds out of it is not, not bad, although expensive for 4CP. If you spent 4CP and got two wounds out of your shield break cannon, you'd be a bit pissed, wouldn't you? You would be, yeah. Uh... Hmm. I'm missing the strat that allows you to fight on full profile. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm looking in the wrong place or misremembering. Machine spirit resurgent is this it? Oh, yes. Hey. Yes, machine spirit resurgent. It'll cost you two CP, which is actually not bad. Okay. Oh yeah, so, there we go. I might just take something. It's that's... got to be quest or mechanicus then. It can't be. It's got to be Mechanicus aligned. Yeah. So that's. Um, so I'd probably want to take a Castellan. I'd probably want to align it to Questor and then. Quest for my Mar Yeah, sorry. Questor Mechanicus. Then for my martial tradition, I'm probably going to just take something. The other one is Machine Focus, maybe, actually. 
Hover and machine focus. Each time a model with this martial tradition is selected to shoot, you can either reroll one wound roll or one damage roll. That might be really important on that siege breaker cannon. Just yeah, get yeah. an extra wound on there. Or so if you don't need the extra, your, your big gun. Your yeah, sorry, the volcano lance. Yes, uh, you 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 really need it to wound, don't you? And if yeah. you do roll good on the wounds, then being able to reroll the damage when potentially you can have fourteen damage a shot, that might be the way to go with it, right? Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, really makes uh, perfect but, sense. So, so you, Mark, you said about um, armages. Yes. What do you think of it? So you reckon they're the best thing to bring as a blood angel? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Gall uh, the um, war glaives or the helverins? War glaives. Um, I would not bring the helverins because I don't think we could make the best use of the fire support that they bring. They they'd pop out, they'd shoot something, they'd die. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Right. I'd rather have, for, for the fact that they've got the five models and the obsec, I'd rather have something that can run forward and have some melee threat to it as well. Yeah, I, I do completely agree, to be honest. And what about you then, Tony? What is your knight of choice? I, if I wanted to win and I wanted to use knights, I think I would probably follow Mark and I would go with Warglaves. However, if I was bringing knights, it wasn't because I was feeling super competitive. It was because I want to have something big and stompy. Now... As much as I like Dominus patterns, if I'm bringing a Dominus, I'm bringing the Valiant because I want to harpoon a plane um, and then burn something else. So, and I'm not going to do that. My knight of choice for Blood Angels is the Knight Gallant. Which is you don't, the melee you don't think only. we have enough melee support anyway? Like, it is. I'll, tell you what, I'll tell you what, I'll show you why. So, um, I'll show you why. So, let's watch this not work. As I bring okay. up my Blood Angels list Ooh. with a knight. Ooh. Here it is. This is my Blood Angels list with a knight. So this is a battalion. Now, I've got Dante in there because I need the CP, basically. <laughs> I've got a librarian in there because I've got Null Zone. And I want Null Zone for this. Right. Uh, remember, your knight doesn't have an, um, an invulnerable save in melee anyway. Ooh. So <laughs> Null Zone him away. This makes no difference uh, if he's in melee. Uh, and then what I've brought here is I've brought a couple of Salt Intercessor squads because they're cheap and some Incursors so I can start with something up the board and try and hold myself a bit of a pathway clear. A couple of Redemptive Dreadnoughts for a bit of fire support. I've got a couple of units of Sanguinary Guard. They're pretty beefy units. One of them's got an Inferno Pistol because I had fair five points spare. Um, I've got a Whirlwind in there for Fight Last. And then I've got my Knight Gallant. And I've given it no upgrades at all. It's absolutely bare bones. And the reason for this is that on turn one, my knight gallant, because it's the fastest of the knights, runs towards whatever's big and scary. It's your distraction card effects. It's a distraction card effects. Because you can't ignore it because it's huge and it's going to mince anything in melee. The um, If I need it to, I can use the librarian to uh, remove inbun saves, which means he can run up and punch Morty or whatever other big scary thing he's got. You've got that strap to potentially do a ridiculous number of mortal wounds. Uh, if you go with uh, Questor Imperialis, for this is for melee. Uh, no, you can't do it. That that's that requires a relic. Does it? Yeah. Oh, all right, you can't do that. But it doesn't matter anyway, because you're still going to run up and spank something with a massive great big fist or chainsaw. Um, but he's going to run a shit ton in, of damage. He's going to do a shit ton of damage. He can charge. If something's really deadly, he can charge that. He probably won't go down in a turn. You bring the uh, the knightly trait that we talked about to give him kind of uh, transhuman hitiology. Mm -hmm. um, and you can use the strat to give him transhuman as well, if you want to. Uh, so no, that only works on amateurs. Does that only work on amateurs? Yeah, only works All on right, amateurs. we can't do that. Then it's just to rely on the fact that toughness eight. Yeah. Um, I'm say, I mean, not many things are wounding you on better than four. Not many things anyway. are wounding on better than a, a, three or a four anyway. Pretty so yeah. you charge him in, he goes and kills things and makes a big mess of things and doesn't die for as long as possible. Uh, and while that's all going on, you're getting all your sanguinary guard into position and all your assault intercessors into position. And then suddenly turn three runs uh, rolls around, they finally kill off your knight and the rest of your blood angels drop on them and eat the rest. That's fair enough. Um, when considering a knight to bring in a blood angels list, 
uh, uh, after reading through everything, I ruled out any of the Questorus pattern ones, which are the mid-size ones. Yep. And the reason why I ruled that out is because they all inherently in their stats come with built-in buffs to other smaller armature class knights. True. Which means but, that all their points include those buffs. Yeah, but the gallant you, buff is shit yeah, anyway, yeah. so who cares? Oh yeah, Grant, it just means that you're paying for a buff you're not going to use. You're paying for a buff you're not really going to use. But his sole purpose is to run at things, yeah, shouting yeah. very loudly, stab something and then die. And then you use the strat to auto blow him up as well. Yeah, for a ton of mortal wounds. Great. For a ton of mortal wounds. So it's it's not... And this is where... Because we looked at fire support before, and I actually agree with you completely. That I don't think that you get enough fire support out of a knight to be the fire support that we need. <laughs> For me, he's he's a, he's the biggest of distraction carnifexes. My problem with bringing a knight for fire support for blood angels is, I've already ruled out bringing Questorus for the mentions mm. the reasons I just mentioned. If I bring a Castellan or a Valiant, then that's cool and they'll kill stuff really good. But if I lose first turn, I'm not hiding it and it's dead. No, it's or eggs it's in one basket. And that's why those classes of knights aren't really my first pick which is why i then go to the armages and i know we're not talking about imperial knights as an army today but i don't think that i would run those big knights even in an imperial knights army for that very uh, reason well, I might I run one. Eggs in one basket syndrome might run one maybe but anyway, um, yeah yes different subject but yeah so i just think it'd be a bit of fun to put a big choppy thing in with your blood angels and chop things on turns one and two yeah i mean you can I was going to say, if you run like, I didn't dislike your list, but if you run like a Sangry Ancient or you ran some sort of turn one threat, yeah, uh, like Blood Angels turn one threat, because this guy's not going to make it in in turn one, right? But you can make it in in turn two, probably, with this 12 inch move. Yeah. Um, there is also that nifty thing where you can basically heroic intervene 12 inches with a knight. You have to roll a d6. Yeah. So, assuming he just advances. Remind me where that is. Um, I'm sure that might be from a buff they don't. Oh, that might not be a stratagem. That might, yeah, that might be a household trait. Yeah, yeah, you're right. But, you're right. So maybe they can't heroically intervene as a free blade. But it's still, twelve inch move. You're going to put him right forward because there's no point hiding him. But you're going to um, advance him because he's got like what one melt a gun. Yeah, yeah. So you're going to you're going to you're going at least straight in. You're going between thirteen and eighteen inches forward, I guess. Uh, and and some of these maps, combat because they're using infiltrators or the equivalent of, then all the better. Yeah, it gives you a springboard of something to charge quickly and go forward. Just just running forward. 400 points is a lot of points, but if you lose 400 points and they've dedicated their whole army to doing it and you've still got two big units of Sanguinary Guard and Dante and all this sort of stuff still on your board, you're not out of the game even if you've lost first turn. Yeah, and I mean, you can also rotate his ion shields, which might be worth doing. Give him a four-up in against shooting. Yeah. Yep. I think um, he's not. I think he's a good choice as a knight. I think he's interesting. I think. Yeah. I, I think, think I'll it's... probably go with marks, and I'll bring the war glaives. But if I wanted to win, but you don't bring the knight in your blood angels because you want it to make it more competitive. I don't think. I think blood angels are competitive on their own. You don't spend three CP to shove another knight in there. I don't know. Maybe. I don't think it was quite back at the early 8th when it was your Loyal 32, your oh, Knight yes. Castell and I'm so and glad that's gone. Sanguinary Guard. I was going to say, it's, um, sometimes it can also be about people not knowing how to play against it. Yeah. Right? Like, because if you've got two squads of Sanguinary Guard and two Redemptor Dreadnoughts and you think, well, they're all threats, mm. and then there's a giant and knight just... company as well at the same time. <laughs> yeah charging right down the middle of the table at me. I mean, at that point, do you even need the Whirlwind um, on your list, Tony? You well, just take... Sure, but I mean... Um... If you're overwhelming them with that many, many threats, do you need yeah. it? Is where it's, This is a threat-overwhelming list. That is all it's about. Yeah. Um, uh, but the It's nice to be able to... Do you remember that game you played probably a year ago now against um, Nids, back long before their Codex, when mm -hmm. you Whirlwinded the Demacron every single turn? And yes. it meant that he spent the entire turn not charging anything because it knew it was going to get smacked down first. And that's what the whirlwind's for. 
Yeah, they've got some true. horrible threat that they want to charge my knight with because they know the knight's a little bit vulnerable if he gets charged. And you spank it with the whirlwind first, I mean, the knight gets to fight first. True. And I, I do love the fact that um, the Thunder Strike Gauntlet is just damage eight. Oh, yeah. Because um, da because damage six isn't enough, right? No. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> there you, go. you might want to charge my knight and get rid of it, but if you're striking last, he's going to punch you with a Thunder Strike Gauntlet first. Yeah, yes. and that might get through your bike captain with five up, feel no pain and toughness seven and three up in vulnerable save and every other fucking defensive thing it's got. That would yeah. get through him, no problem. I mean, the thunder, the thunder strike gauntlet, even the sweep attack, which you get ten attacks with, is damage three, um, <laughs> which is just you know he's just killing anything. I as much as I really want to run a castellan, like your your argument to run the galad here is really persuasive. I don't know how competitive it will be. And it, once it gets past that kind of shock value of what the hell do I do against this, there's all these things trying to come and kill me, then against some lists, it's going to get picked apart. Yes. Um, against some Tau lists, against some Eldar lists, it's really going to probably struggle. But against other lists, there, it's just going to massively overwhelm them. Okay. Um, you did say you like the Paladin as well a little bit, right? I do, but I like it for its buffing ability. Yeah. Okay. The battle so, cannon. The battle cannon's not bad, but it's a little bit swingy. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's been made up because I used to like the Crusader, but I guess both mm. the Gatling cannon and the battle cannon now into armor of contempt are just going to be minus one. Which I mean, the battle seems... cannon's still good for the amount of raw damage it does per hit. Still, yeah, flat three damage is nice, mm. but it's a random um, number of shots. In some ways, the Crusader has the same problem that I guess, like the Nemesis Dread Knights from Grey Knights, are going to have now, right? Where like um, their guns, fire. they've just yeah. lost a bunch of their AP, and um, it's. I mean, it'll be fine into other armies, you know, like, yeah. but just into Marines and whoever else content gets Armor of Contempt, just not so much. Um, yeah, the Crusaders' appeal as a fire base has eroded now that the full book is out. It's it's less of. I think it's the, still the go to that I thought it was yeah. going to be. If you're playing knights, it's still got some benefit because you can upgrade it to be really nasty on the defense and have it as a kind of I'm going to hold my home objective with some Helverins yeah. and you bust them all up and you have this kind of like massive firebase in your own. But it's not something that I could see you usefully bringing in another army. Yeah, I agree with that. I just want to say one last thing i think and it's it's not so much about like the knights it's a as much about like the ongoing problem of physical books uh physical books that cost 32 pounds as well if i i mean i did buy this uh yeah. but if i was a dedicated knight player and you just bought this to get like the new exciting rules for the crusader and the week before obviously after this book has been printed they like bring out armor of contempt <laughs> It feels a bit shit, right? Um, I, don't, I don't know I don't how know. else. No, it doesn't feel as shit as when they uh, complete, they changed the um, Custodes book the week, significantly changed the units in the Custodes a week after they come out, and they've done the same with NIDs. Rightly so, that was fixing a few problems, but it's a significant change. To say, but another army stuff, this book hasn't changed yet. It probably will, but it hasn't yet. At least the book, as is us recording this, is still mm. correct. Apart from <laughs> one thing that's totally wrong. Or two things. Yeah. Might you know, look, I've got the collector's edition. That's how. Oh yeah, you're hardcore. Aren't On you? board for nights, you are. On board for nights, I am. And actually, I just fair enough. No. Beautiful. Cool. Beautiful. Okay. Board. Um, is there anything else? Like, so, push comes to shove. Are either of you going to include a knight in any other like Imperium army, be it Blood Angels or be it something else? Is it something that you're actually going to run, or is it just uh uh exercise in like interest or something however you want to call that i think war glaives would have value in a number of imperial lists i might stick genuinely i'm thinking about putting that silly gallant in my custode okay because right. my, the custodes i have, have a bit of a problem with a, a lack of mobility they're not very quick so once they get onto the midfield and hold the midfield then they're not going anywhere um but apart from bikes they do suffer a bit for speed so having this which is actually compared to the rest of the army moving six a really quick early game 
high again it's another thing that's got multiple damage because that's the other custodes problem of only having a lot of two damage weapons mm, yeah, i think something true. with a straight with a damage eight weapon on it is really going to benefit them so probably not in my blood angels i might run that silly list that i posted a minute ago for a laugh but i i'm more tempted in my custodes okay to cool. fill a hole that they've got okay and right. um I guess we'll see if we run into any the likes of Death Guard or Thousand Sons or something like that running some Chaos Knights. I think the rules are very similar in that they can bring a... I they think didn't call it a wandering hero, them, but... The Chaos Knights might benefit a little bit more because their their sort of core is making the knight itself more powerful. True. Oh, yeah, I mean, right. The armor not, stuff they lose. I've not read it, so I couldn't... No, say, I'm, I'm really. speculating. I'm not... I'm not speaking from a position of knowledge here at all. Yeah, fair. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, guys, for being here and us. giving us a little a chat about nights. Um, we need to have you guys on the channel more often because uh, Tony's Mr. Popular from our, our poll over on the, the Pretty Grots <laughs> channel. Um, so that was, that was I, I nearly like brought up my you know, choked when I saw you put that on there, John. <laughs> that was. I think it's your beer tastes. That's what's made you WTF popular. moment. What mm -hmm. the shit. Um. Cool. All right. So uh, leave us any comments down below, and we will do our best to answer them. Yeah. What knights um, you bring? Why you bring them? What they think you'd add to the list? Yeah. And and check do... out the Grotz video from last night if you haven't seen it yet, and you want more cool. grotty night content. I was going to say, yeah, definitely do that. And do you think there will be a uh... You think there'll be a Blood Angels list that wins a GT with the knights and with a knight detachment in the next year, or you don't think it'll surface? I don't think so. For the next six or seven months, on the basis that they said that the next chapter approved will reduce the amount of CP you start yeah, with as an I think army, they're going to be that's going to be a major problem. Starved. Yeah, um, which is a shame, but you never know. I think it's something for narrative or friendly at the moment rather than maybe hardcore. I think it's cool that they brought the option back. Yeah, um, I'm really pleased. Oh, absolutely. Because it looks cool. It's, it gives a great centerpiece to an army. That yeah, space absolutely. Marines especially, and guard actually, really sort of lack. Yeah, it, de it depends how they implement this whole reduced amount of CP and how it all works, but yeah. maybe, maybe not. Cool. All right, well, we'll have some content on that when it comes. Uh, thanks again for joining us, guys. Really do appreciate it. And um, yeah, please check out last night's episode on the Grotz as well. Like Tony said, there'll be a video link in the description below. Bye bye, everybody. Toodles. So I think in the future, I'll do some videos looking at some of the Math Hammer. We'll compare maybe like a Falchion against like the Castellan because those two things seem similar. It should be a fun video. If there's anything else you want me to compare, leave me a comment down below. I will catch you next week, brothers. By the blood, are we made strong? Peace.